Hey guys, welcome back to the Bruce Peninsula. Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am David Clark and this is my old sled. Uh, the 2018-19 snowmobiling season is just about here and I'm back to making videos. This is my first video of the season. Typically this time of year I do get inquiries from you guys asking if I'm still making videos. I take a bit of a hiatus during the summer months. I mean it is a snowmobiling channel and contrary to what some of my friends in the south think it's not always the land of snow and ice. It gets actually quite hot up here. Um, I am in Ontario, Canada for those of you that are new to the channel. This has been one of those years for me. If you haven't had one yet, you will. Uh, it started off early in the spring. My wife took a bit of a fall. Um, there was some fractures, some surgeries. It kind of threw a lot of things out this summer and it just kind of went downhill from there. So I've made a couple of purchases recently that'll give me something to talk about on the channel. Uh, what I'm gonna talk about in this video is uh, I finally bought a helmet to replace this modular one that I've been using. I have wanted a BV2S since I first got into snowmobiling. I just love this helmet. Um, I know they have brought in a newer one, the Oxygen, um, but this is the helmet that I have wanted uh, since I first got my sled. So in this video, we're gonna do a quick unboxing and a review of this helmet. We're gonna compare it against the modular one that I've been using. Even if you're not looking at this particular helmet, hopefully this video will still be useful because we'll talk about some of the features of snowmobile helmets. So now that I've got the new helmet, obviously you gotta get a new sled to go with it. So I'll give you a quick look at that. All right guys, I'll give you a quick peek. We'll talk about this uh, in an upcoming video. But there she is, that's my new sled. It's a 2005 MXZ 600 Adrenaline. There's one other thing I picked up this summer that I think will give me a chance to do some more content in the summer when I'm not snowmobiling. It's a 2005 Honda Rancher. I know a lot of guys that are into snowmobiling or into motorsports in general, so hopefully this will give me something to do some videos on during the summer months. All right, if you've been following me for a while, I've mentioned track maps in the past. So it's a company that makes uh, mapping products for GPS for snowmobilers. Well, I also just found out that they make mapping products for ATVs as well. So once we get a chance to look at the helmet, uh, if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can win a free copy of track maps for ATVs. So we're gonna do all that in two seconds, so stick around. All right guys, so this is the channel where we talk about all things snowmobiling. I tend to focus on older machines, but really there's a little bit of something for everybody. So if you haven't already, take a second, subscribe to the channel, click that little bell icon, then you'll get notified when I post a new video. All right, my BV2S has just arrived. I have wanted this helmet as long as I've been snowmobiling. Uh, the modular one I've got is great, but this is the helmet I always wanted. Now, I really kind of hesitated on buying this helmet just because of the price. Now, if you've got it to spend, that's great. Uh, for me, five, $600 is a lot of money for a helmet. The odd time I would see one of these used, but really a helmet is not something I wanna buy used. Firstly, it's like buying clothes, right? I mean, somebody's been wearing it. Uh, but secondly, it's a piece of safety equipment, right? So you don't know if there's damage to this helmet that you can't see. I really think a helmet is something you wanna buy new. So I was online recently, I saw a Facebook ad from St. Ange Recreation in Barrie. They were selling these helmets off for 250 bucks. Okay, so let's open this up and have a look at what's in the box. So obviously we've got the helmet which comes in a little bag. You can also get a case for these, but ooh, that is a nice looking helmet. Um, okay, so we got some paperwork, probably warranty instructions. Looks like we've got some absorbent pads. We've got the owner's manual. And we've got batteries. That's always kind of cool when a helmet comes with batteries. <laughs> Actually, I know what these batteries are for. We'll talk about those in a minute. All right, let's just start off with the aesthetics and the design of this helmet. I think this helmet looks cool as hell. You know, I'm old enough now. I don't really care what anybody else thinks. I'm a huge nerd. I mean, to me, this helmet just looks absolutely cool. All 
All right, now we'll move into uh, to the functionality of the helmet. I'm gonna start with size. I think this is important. It's something I was concerned about because I was buying online uh, and I couldn't try the helmet on. So this modular one I have is a medium. My HJC helmet is actually an extra large. They both fit fine. Even if I'm wearing a balaclava, it's a really comfortable fit. So I did ask with the BV2S if the sizing was the same. Uh, one person that I asked said, yes, it should be the same. The other person said, I'm not really sure that modular one is an older technology, so they may not be the same. I'm kind of glad that I went a size bigger. So this is a large. I had a look on the Skidoo website. They actually have a sizing chart and you can use that. It'll show you how to measure whether you're buying a jacket or gloves or helmet. Really suggest you do that. I mean, ideally, I would say go into a dealership and try the helmet, even if you're gonna buy it online. Uh, if you try it out, you know it's gonna fit. And I'm really glad I did, because this is a large, and this is still pretty snug on me. It's not uncomfortably tight, but if I had gone with a medium with this BV2S, it wouldn't have fit. All right, so one of the features I think is important with a snowmobile helmet is field of vision, or how well can you see when you're wearing it. Now, if I compare these two helmets side by side, uh, the opening in the front of the helmet is pretty much the same. So it's about nine inches across and about three inches high in both cases. So that's very similar. There's a slight difference in the shape of the visor on the BV2S uh, versus the modular one. So this helmet, this visor is a lot more rounded. So apparently that's supposed to give you less distortion. This helmet also has a really good seal around the top and the bottom. And on the bottom, the visor really snaps down into it. So I think the helmet is gonna be warmer and quieter. Another feature I think is really good with a snowmobile helmet is an integrated glare shield or a, a tinted visor, right? So both of these helmets have it, as do the modular two and three. Um, there's a couple of key differences. Now, the reason I think it's important, if you're thinking about the type of riding I do in particular, I'm out on trails. So one minute I can be out in the bright sun and the glare and then I'm under the trees where it's darker. Uh, and obviously taking sunglasses off and on is not a good option. So I like having this option. There's a couple of key differences between these helmets. So in the modular helmet, when I, I want to put that visor down, there's a little slider on the top. It's pretty easy to use. Um, the BV2S has a slightly different mechanism. Uh, it's got a handle on the side. So when I push that down, the glare shield comes down and there it moves up out of the way. There's one other key difference with the way these visors work. On the modular helmets, the uh, glare shield is integrated with the outer visor. So if I put this visor up, I can't put that glare shield down, right? because it moves up with the visor. And that's a problem because quite often when I'm riding, if it's a warmer day, I want to open that and get a bit of air through the helmet. They've kind of solved that with a BV2S. I really like this feature that I can open the visor and I can still put the glare shield down. The other big difference between these two helmets is the modular function. So uh, on this modular one and the twos and threes and a lot of other modular helmets on the market, uh, the entire face shield will lift up out of the way. Um, so if you've been out riding, you want to get some fresh air, you want to talk to somebody or have a cup of coffee, you lift that whole front section up. The other uh, reason that this is handy is putting the helmet on and off. I kind of always put it on with that visor up and then I flip it down. So the BV2S is a little bit different. In this case, this section, you press the two buttons and it pivots down out of the way. To be honest, I like the modular design better. Uh, and the main reason is putting the helmet on and off, right? Because in this case, the helmet is still enclosed at the bottom. Um, sort of along those lines, the, the, one of the reasons this helmet seems a little bit tight to get on and off is it's got this built-in skirt, uh, which I really think is a good idea. And again, when we get out and ride with this helmet, I'll have a better idea. But that's one area that I've found on those really cold days that I kind of feel it. So this is kind of a nice feature, but it does make the helmet seem a little bit tighter to get on and off. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is fogging, and that's really important with a snowmobile helmet. So if you're new to snowmobiling, you want to make sure you get a good snowmobile helmet. You don't just use a motorcycle helmet. The main difference with a snowmobile helmet is it's designed to reduce fogging. Okay, and that's important because you're riding out in the cold, you're breathing warm air out, and that'll fog up on your visor and you can't see where you're going. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. Some snowmobile helmets will come with a, a heated shield. Neither of these helmets have it. I've never really had a problem with fogging with the helmets that I have. These helmets basically accomplish it in the same way. So firstly, they both have a double paned outer visor. So just like a window, you have uh, multiple panes of glass in a window, it's the same thing. So these are both double visors. Uh, the other thing that they have is a breath evac system or a way of directing the breath 
uh, that you're, you're exhaling away from the visor. So in the modular one, it kind of, you breathe into this pilot style mask and it exhausts out of the side of the helmet. When this closes, there's a vent on the side. So the BV-2S basically does the same thing. It does a little bit differently. So, and there's some things I like about it and some things I don't. So the mask is attached to this piece that pivots. We can take that right off the helmet fairly easy. It just unsnaps. So in terms of what, the one difference that concerns me a little bit is that your breath exhausts right out of the front. So it's right under the visor. I'm not sure that's a big deal because you're going to be moving. It's not like it's going to be hanging there to condense on your visor. But that's the one thing I was wondering about. If you use one of these helmets, let me know in the comments below. Um, one of the things that I like about this design, if you look at the modular, it's got these kind of accordion style tubes. It's kind of like the old snorkels, right? Uh, that your breath goes through. One of the things I find when you've been out riding for a couple hours, you get condensation that builds up in there. And I find these tubes and the little ribs inside of them get kind of full of condensation that's uh, kind of tough to clean out. So that's one thing that you won't see with the BV-2S. The other thing that's a nice feature with this helmet is you can actually adjust how well this mask fits you. Uh, so it goes into it in more detail in the manual, but basically this vent on the front, in addition to be a vent, it's also the adjustment for the masks. So as you turn this, the mask inside moves in and out and you can just adjust it till you get a nice seal around your face. There's a couple of features the BV-2S has that the modular helmets don't. So the first one is this threaded hole on this side. You can actually get a flashlight attachment that goes on the side of the helmet. I think that's pretty cool actually. If you're riding at night, you want to look at a map or you want to look under your hood. That's something I'm probably going to end up getting. The other thing I think with that is for the price of these helmets, they should have included the flashlight. Okay, last feature I want to talk about. Remember the batteries we got out of the box? So inside this helmet is a battery compartment. It's in behind the lining on the back of the helmet. It's actually a little tricky to get to. So that is for this on the back of the helmet here. You'll notice in just here under the visor it says push. If I push that, it's a little LED light. So I got a couple of, I mean, that wouldn't make or break my helmet purchase. I think it's, it's kind of a cool feature. I think on the one hand, I can't argue with anything that makes you more visible when you're out on the road at night. So yeah, absolutely. I don't think it's a bad idea. But the other side of me is saying, well, I think a driver is probably going to see that big honking light on the back of my snowmobile before they see that. But yeah, anything that makes you more visible, I think is a good idea. You know, so overall, I think the BV-2S is going to be a really nice uh, helmet. I'm happy with this purchase. You know, and I think this is probably a really good time to, to buy one, too. With the oxygen just coming out, I think you're going to have a lot of dealers that are going to try to move old stock on these BV-2S helmets. Okay, so that's the BV-2S helmet, and I think that's about it for this video. Now, as promised, this is track maps, ATV mapping, uh, GPS mapping for ATVs. So there's over 3,800 kilometers of ATV trails on this, 12,000 plus points of interest, uh, national provincial parks are on this. There's just all kinds of information for your GPS if you're into ATV. So if you want to win yourself a free copy of this, there's a couple of things I want you to do. One, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, two, head over to my Facebook page. I'm going to put a link in the description for this video. And keep an eye in the next day or two. I'll be announcing that contest on Facebook and you win yourself a free copy. So that's it for me. Until next time, I'm David Clark. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Yep, you know, so overall, I think this is uh, <clears throat> Welcome back to the Bruce Peninsula. All right, now there's one other thing that I bought this summer there. I think I'll get... Welcome back to the Bruce. Hey, welcome back to the Bruce. So I know a lot of guys that are into... <clears throat> I know that a lot of guys... Hey, welcome back... <clears throat> I do that all the time. Hey, welcome back to the Bruce.